Hi, my name's Heidi Helliard and I'm the author of the book Creative Polymer Clay, published by David and Charles. The book contains a heap of different techniques when working with polymer clay and a whole lot more projects, step-by-step -step tutorial projects. And today I'm going to do a video of one of the tutorials in the book, which is this torn clay trinket dish. So this um, project also covers off one of the techniques, which is slab making. And this is a really wonderful, simple entry level um, slab to make that I'm gonna show you from start to finish. And not only are we gonna make this dish, but we're also going to make these super simple earrings. Okay, going through what you're going to need to make the torn clay trinket dish and little extra is firstly a suitable work surface um, that is good to work with with polymer clay and that is essentially a non-porous surface. Um, I prefer to work on coated ceramic tiles, glass cutting mats or glass, thick glass, not just picture frame glass is great as well. Um, you'll need an acrylic roller and these um, solid acrylic rollers are great and specifically designed for polymer clay. You'll also need um, a tissue blade and I like also having a craft knife on hand and some texturing tools and these are balling tools this is a balling tool um, you can get these specifically for polymer clay but also nail art you can get these all over the place on the internet so as well as those tools really simple tools um, dishes for like mold to put the clay in in order to bake the dish into the into the right shape so anything that is heat proof so this is a glass uh, heat heat proof glass dish that can go in the oven um, this is just a ceramic dish i love i always keep my eye out when i go to thrift shops and op shops um, for little dishes like this that i can use for different sizes and depths and things like that so a dish of your choosing so aside, so they're the tools. It's really simple. You really you hardly need anything at all. Um, as far as clay goes, you'll need a decent amount of clay for the background of the slab that will then become the trinket dish. Um, I'm going to use black and I use Sculpey Primo black. And then I've chosen four accent colors. I've chosen Primo, um, Sculpey Primo turquoise, Sculpey Primo um, periwinkle, and Sculpey Primo Wasabi and some white as well. So you'll only need a small amount of these pieces of clay, but you will need a decent amount of this clay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to condition this black clay, the background clay. So now conditioning polymer clay cannot be used straight out of the packet. You can see it's quite um, stiff and it crumbles and sort of cracks quite easily or comes apart quite easily so you all what the first thing you have to do with polymer clay before you use it for anything is to condition it and conditioning it warms up the clay it gets all the plasticizers and other elements within the clay to start to bond um, and um, sort of bring the, the material together so it's more workable um, and it will also mean when you cure it, that it cures really strong and doesn't crack. So there's two ways of conditioning polymer clay. You can do it by hand. And I'm what I'm doing now is just working with the clay, just warming it up with my hands and also moving it around and sort of just getting it to start be a bit movable. And the other way you can, um, along, with, along with your hands, utilize your acrylic roller to just start working with the clay, getting it mixed back up together. Now, so aside from working with um, conditioning polymer clay but with, with your hands, you can utilize a pasta machine. And makers do this and have been doing this for ages. So just a good old pasta machine. Um, and one thing to say though with using that kind of any kind of equipment you start to use for polymer clay you can't then use for pasta or whatever it was used for before so anything from the kitchen that you're using for polymer clay once it gets used with clay it stays in the in the studio it doesn't go back into the kitchen so that's starting to get more flexible just even by working with it by hand so what i'm going to do though is run it through a pasta machine i've just got off to camera and you'll start to see how it starts to kind of 
come together. It's still cracking on the side, so it's still it's still not 100% conditioned or ready to work with. But I'm just running it through a pasta machine off to the side. This can all be done with hands and with a roller. And you'll know when your clay is conditioned because it will start to fold over without cracking and it will just feel like it's ready to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, come back in a second with this clay beautifully conditioned. Okay, I now have a piece of um, black clay that's really nicely conditioned. You can see it's all um, really smooth, it's flexible, it's warmed up. Um, watch, when you're conditioning clay, the one thing you do wanna watch for is any bubbles in the um, clay. And as you see them, if you see them as you're conditioning them, you can pop them with your blade and just release the air and keep conditioning. Because if you have any kind of bubbles in your clay, once it's cured, those bubbles, the air will expand and turn into a cured bubble. So I can't see any huge bubbles in this. I know I'm gonna texture this sheet a lot and that will actually cover a lot of the bubbles. So, and there's gonna be some more clay that goes on, on the top of this. So I have rolled this out to be about three, a bit over three, between three and four mil thick. Um, there's a few ways you can determine the thickness of your clay through the machine um, by eye is fine, especially for a trinket dish. You can also utilize um, depth guides, which you can purchase or make out of um, wooden sticks or pieces of cardboard, etc. So the clay now is ready for me to put um, the color on. Okay, what I've done now is condition all of the accent color clay and I've rolled it really, really thin, like paper, paper thin, as thin as it will go, um, so that they're ready now to tear up and add to the slab. So while I do this for a little bit, so what we're doing is we're making a polymer clay slab. The book has several polymer clay slab. Um, not only um, does it have, you know, talking about polymer clay slabs as a technique, um, it also has several projects in it, including this one. So the basics of a slab are piece of background clay that is thick enough, that is a certain thickness, decorations put on top, then you can either decide to roll those decorations into the background slab um, or you can leave it raised. And then texture can be added, all kinds of things can be added. And then usually what happens is that um, slab is um, cut into shapes, most popularly um, earrings can be made out of the slab um, or other things like a trinket dish or a wall hanging or all kinds of things. So it's a wonderfully simple technique with um, very much so sky's the limit with what you can do with it. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm just tearing small pieces of clay um, and just placing them on the slab. Um, I'm trying to sort of rotate between the colors to get a random even distribution. We're gonna start sort of overlapping the pieces too. Um, and that's the thing with a slab or one aspect of doing a slab because you probably you're possibly going to cut lots of small pieces is to distribute your pattern evenly squint a lot check where you've got gaps and make sure that the whole thing is covered nice and evenly so i'm just going to keep doing this what we might end up doing is cutting back coming back when it's all covered up. So I'm gonna, I will do a little bit of um, overlapping. Now, ultimately what we're going to do with this is add some texture to the negative space within the slab, which is the back, black background. So bearing that in mind, I don't wanna cover, I don't want these little tear torn pieces to cover the entire slab so we can't see any of the black. At the same time, I don't want too much um, because you want a lot of color on there. So it's a fine line, but I'm hoping to give you a good sense of sort of how far to take it. And I've chosen four colors here. You could choose two, you could choose six, you could choose more, less, and obviously, of course, any color combination you like. That's the beauty of this technique, which A, doesn't require any skill. We're not talking about caning. We're not talking about anything else. This is just such a lovely, um, easy, and fun, wait till we get to the texturing, that is super fun. Project to do, just to, if you're brand new to polymer clay, this is a really, really wonderful um, 
project to just get you in and addicted. So I'm just going to keep, you can see I'm building up, slowly building up the pattern across the slab. I feel like I just need to keep making sure I'm covering the black and adding all the colors in that we want to add. Okay, what you can see now is the slab itself has been nicely evenly covered with the torn clay pieces. Um, I've overlapped them. There's a good coverage of different colours and um, enough sort of negative and positive space for what I want to do. You can see that it's not flat yet. So the next step now is to roll in the um, accent coloured clay. Now, rolling clay... Firm but firm but also gentle. You're just wanting to add a, like an even pressure across. And the beauty of these rollers, as you can see, is you can see through them. The other important thing when working with slabs is to um, pick them up and rotate them in between rolls. It's not so much of an issue with this abstract slab, but when you're working with more um, definitive shapes you don't want the rotating what that means is you you get an even spread because as you roll this top clay into the base you are making the slab thinner and it does spread out so in order to, to avoid distortion you're picking it up and rotating it as you go now, this is where you can use depth guides to get yourself to a, an even level. For this kind of a project, it's perfectly fine to go by eye um, and feel to see how um, thin you want it to go and whether it feels even. You can tell by rolling it over. So as you can see, the top, the clay is now getting much more integrated into the slab. So I'm thinking just a few more rolls and then it'll be time to texture. And you could you could stop here. You do wouldn't you don't have to texture it. You could stop here and go straight to um straight to making your trinket dish. So, that's as much as I'm going to roll it in. Before I texture it, I'm just going to check with my the mold that I'm going to use that there's enough of the slab by, by just placing it over I'm not going to put it on yet but yes there's enough of the slab and I want to do something else with the extra bit of clay so that's fine we've got plenty of clay to make our dish so I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to texture this so I thought I'd come and show you up close how I'm going to texture this um, slab um, I've got a really small simple balling tool and all I'm going to do is just gently press into the clay in all of the negative black space. Now, whenever I'm talking about texturing, my one piece of advice is to do it carefully and mindfully. There's nothing worse than messy texturing. And with this type of sort of hammered effect, you do really need to sort of do your texturing, like don't leave any gaps in between your texturing. Just take, this is, this is a wonderfully, calming therapeutic activity and I, what I love about this technique is you can see it already how it transforms the black clay to just something else it darkens it it adds texture it also means the colored clay pops even more so what I will do is I'm going to just do a little bit more of this and then I'll come back when it's all done. But this is so easy, so satisfying. Just brings it to another level. So now I've textured the whole slab in between all the colours in the negative space and you can see just how much it um, adds to the texture and to the pattern.
even more so when it's turned into a curved trinket dish. So the next step is to cut out a circle for it to go into our mold. So what I tend to do with the trinket dishes is I'll gently, I'll use the trinket dish itself as a template. You can use large circle cutters, but I tend to like to um, cut them out by hand. So what I'm gonna do is just pu put it where I know I'm gonna get enough clay. And what I tend to do is just, this does not have to be super neat, I will just, by hand using a craft knife, just cut a circle just a few millimetres bigger than the dish itself. Just a little bit. So just by hand, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so what I then do is carefully take the dish off, put that to the side. Then what I'm gonna do is peel off this. We're gonna come back to this in a second. And then what we've got is um, the remaining circle. What you can do is use your tissue blade to lift it off the tile or glass surface if it's a little bit stuck. So now is the time to get your circle of clay into your mould. So there's nothing you need to do to the mould um, to prep it. And it's just a matter of carefully, gently coaxing the clay into the mold. So what I'm just doing is gently stretching the clay and what I tend to do is peel back and let the air out that's underneath. And you're working the clay all the time into the bottom edges of the mold. You need to work out all the air. Any air that's left underneath the clay and between the mold will turn into an air bubble. Don't worry about fingerprints at this point. We can clean them up later. So you just gently always, that's getting there. So just feel it's still not quite, it's got to touch it. This is a nice mold too, it's quite shallow. Deeper molds like this one are harder to work the clay in. You have to stretch it much more. So. That's feeling good. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, as you can see, there's a little bit of overhang of the clay in the mold, and that's absolutely fine. You do, it's better to have a bit of overhang, hence why I made it, cut it just that little bit bigger. Okay. So, still just feels like a little bit of air there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now with my um, craft knife is just carefully trim any excess clay just by pressing pressing the blade against the dish and using it as a guide any bits sort of don't come off great you can press them back together we'll come back to that and tidy that up Okay, so this bit here I'll be able to fix up before I put it in the oven and after it comes out of the oven. So this does not have to be perfect at this point. However, you may want to, before it goes in the oven, you may want to smooth all this down with your fingers and curve the edges a little bit or if you want them sharp edged, flat edged, you can. What I'm gonna do here is push this bit out. Tidy it up. I always sand my pieces, which I'll show you when they come out of the oven. But you can choose to tidy it up beforehand, which is no problem at all. So when you feel like you're finished with it and ready for it to be cured, um, what I tend to do is just do a quick wipe over with the pad of my finger to just remove any fingerprints that might be on the clay after you know working with it, working it into the mold. So just by gently rubbing my finger across it, that will get rid of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that to the side and then come back to 
our leftover bit of slab. Now, there's quite a bit left, and I'm going to cut out some um, shapes to make into some simple earrings as well. So, what I might do is grab some cutters. Now, in the book, there's a whole section on using cutters and all the different kinds of cutters that are out there. So I'm going to do that circle there. I'm going to do that circle there. I'm also going to grab a really nice 3D printed cutter that I can use here. So I'm just pressing down on that firmly and evenly, pulling it out. It's fine that it's stuck to the slab. I prefer it when it does that. Yeah. And what I might do with the bits left over is some um, studs, some mega studs. So do one there, two, then get a smaller size. And even using this little bit here. One, two, three, and now if it comes out in the cutter, that is also fine. Using the um, pad of one of your fingers, you can pop it out gently. We can put that on our paper in a second. Okay, that one's come out again. Smaller cutters will be more likely to do that. So what I'm doing now is just getting rid of the skeleton. And in the book, I also talk a lot about utilising um, scraps or leftovers. And these types of skeletons, there's lots of super fun things you can do with these. So I'll be doing something else with these. I will not be throwing them away. The least you could do is um, mix this up again and get sort of another dark black colour. So polymer clay scraps are always usable so what i'm going to do now to get ready for everything to go into the um, oven is i've got some printer paper here just some copy paper what i'm going to do is just start lifting these off the tile and just putting them carefully on the paper don't keep um, uncured clay on paper for long what will happen is the oils in the clay will start to leach onto the paper and weaken the clay so I only ever put um, clay onto copy paper when I'm ready for it to go into the oven Curing clay, follow the instructions of the clay brand you have um, used. And if you've mixed brands, that's certainly absolutely fine. What I tend to do is sort of either average out the different temperatures and times, and I've never had a problem with that. So these pieces are now going to go into the oven for the allocated time, and I'll come back and show you um, how to finish the dish. Okay, everything's now been cured and taken out of the oven and cooled down. So just watch these the dishes will be hot when they come out of the oven. So as you can see, this is stuck in the mold, but it will come out easily. So what we're going to do is just slowly but surely and carefully lift and it's just come out super easily. And there you've got your dish. Just kidding. Now, now for finishing, what I'm going to do to finish this dish is I'm going to use, to start with, a rotary tool with a um, sanding sandpaper attachment, and I'm going to use that to just take the edge off the lip. Um, you can do it. You can do it with um, sandpaper by hand, um, but I'm going to start with using this to take the edge off and do a pretty rough sand job around the edge, and then come back over with some wet and dry 400 grit sandpaper. So I'm gonna then do that. And I'm also going to sand the whole bottom as well and get this shine off. That shine is from the mold, from where it touched the shiny ceramic surface. So I'm gonna do that. I'm also going to, out of these, I'm gonna finish up these two components and turn those into some little hoop earrings. And I'll show you um, just how much better they look after a good hand sand. So I'll come back with these sanded completely and we'll go from there. OK, 
Okay, so these pieces have all been sanded now. We did a first sort of rough sand with the rotary tool. Then I went with some 400 grits wet and dry sandpaper and sanded all of the edges and the back. I did not sand the pattern at all. There's no need to sand that. Um, and it's all feeling really smooth and nice and um, looking really well finished. These pieces too, which I'm going to turn into a little pair of earrings, I've also sanded the edges with sandpaper, wet and dry. You'll see when you use cutters that the cutters will push the colour down onto the side and that's where the sanding really cleans that up. They go through all of this in the book. Um, so these now are ready to um, turn into some earrings. Before I finish them off though, you may find, especially with darker colours, you'll get some light sort of casting after sanding. Now you can buff that off if you want to take it that far. You can certainly buff and shine polymer clay to an absolute glass finish. Um, but if I'm not wanting to do that, what I will do is use one of two things. There's uh, this product called Renaissance Wax, which is like a, um, a buffing uh, polish that um, artisans use. Um, I will also use Vaseline as well. I find that gives just as good a finish. So, and I find that you only need a very small amount. And what I'll do is just rub that all over the edges everywhere I've sanded and it will remove any light sanding marks and it will also just make everything just give it a really subtle sheen which I really like and I have used Vaseline on all of my earring pieces when they've been after they've been sanded now with the sanding I will just say safety um, eye protection and breathing protection. Make sure you're sanding in a um, well-ventilated area. I will add, I'll just say I add the oil to the surface as well. And if I've got this kind of textured pattern, what I will sometimes do is just grab a brush, a soft, clean brush, put a bit of the oil on it and just rub that in to the surface where our fingers can't get to. And I don't know if you can see that, that's just starting to shine a little bit and that shine will stay. So. That's those, I'm gonna do the same thing to the earrings. Always rub it on the sides and then the top as well. I'm going to use a brush just to get into the details. And aside from some holes in these, I'm going to just finish these with a hole in each one and some little hoops. So I'm just using a hand drill for some one-off holes. Polymer clay is really soft. If I'm doing lots and lots of holes, I'll use my rotary tool and eye protection. This is quite simple. And we're just doing two holes so I can do it by hand. So I'm just gonna grab some hoops. thread them through we could have made earrings with some colored tops on them whatever you want to make with that extra bit of slab before or after cutting out your circle for your trinket dish and there we have it we've got some lovely hoop arch earrings and a trinket dish you could put them in Thanks for watching and don't forget to buy the book. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Facebook and thank you again. Thank you so much for watching um, and I hope you have as much fun exploring polymer clay as I have. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, on my website, everywhere pretty much online. So thanks again for watching.